guys so this is the wa67 tube condenser mic from warm audio plugged into channel one of the ssl2 plus this is the wa67 plugged into the roland rubix 22 we're plugged into channel one we've got the warm audio wa67 tube microphone plugged into the fluid audio sri-2 What's up guys, Mark from Spots Music. Here in my home studio, I brought a couple interfaces in from the store to check out, and I'm borrowing an interface currently that I uh, want to compare the three of them and uh, let you hear what the difference is in them. They are all two channel interfaces, so two inputs. The uh, one has additional outputs. I will cover each one through the line here. First up, we're gonna be talking about the SSL2 Plus. Um, all of these are USB interfaces. All of them have uh, dual XLR quarter inch combo jacks on them. Um, the SSL is a plastic frame, but it does have, it's, uh, I would guess it's an aluminum plate um, on the front side. So built pretty well. Uh, the monitor knob on the front covers your monitor outs. And this guy does have four outputs. It's the only uh, interface out of these three that has the two additional outputs. You can utilize those uh, distinctly to have separate monitor mixes to do things like reamping in a recording setting. So kind of a nice feature to have, but th this guy does sell for $279. It's also not something we carry in the store. I just happened to be able to borrow one for this video and uh, thought it was neat to get to use it. One of the things that's also unique about this guy that the other two don't have, there are two headphone jacks as well as a 4K legacy button. Now, if you're familiar with Solid State Logic, um, their analog mixers had this little cool 4K button that gave you a little presence bump, um, like a little high-end shelf kind of sound. Um, so that's all that it is. It's pretty sweet. Next up is a interface that I'm very familiar with. I've utilized this interface for probably close to two years. Um, it's the Roland Rubix 22. Again, the combo jacks there on the front. This guy um, is pretty similar in feature set, just has the one uh, headphone jack and the single output on the back. Um, does have MIDI ins and outs, actually. All of these, I believe, except for the Fluid Audio, um, have MIDI outs. So the Fluid Audio doesn't have MIDI outs. The Roland and the SSL do have MIDI ins and outs. So if you wanted to use a MIDI device, uh, you could utilize that with the Roland. Um, the Roland sells for 149, so it's it's the the most inexpensive model. Um, they all come with a DAW, come with recording software, and the Roland and the SSL both include uh, Ableton Live Lite. Um, the Fluid Audio comes with Cubase. So, yep, 24 bit, 192K, two in, two out interface, pretty simple. Uh, the Fluid Audio, this is the uh, the new one for me, I've never utilized this guy before tonight, so it'll be interesting uh, to get my first take on it. Combo jack, single headphone jack. Um, the All of these have the um, input and DAW where you can listen to kind of the real-time front end of the machine um, to have no latency uh, as you're recording, but you can also cycle between mixing in the uh, DAW or just the input. And then the Roland has a stereo and mono mode for that as well so that you can, uh, you can kind of hear both of those in different places. But the Fluid Audio is kind of the, it built the best out of all of them. Um, it is all aluminum. Um, it's a lot heavier duty. Actually, the Roland is all aluminum too. So both of these guys um, are bricks. The SSL isn't as heavy of weight. Um, it doesn't feel kind of as, as bulky in your hands, but um, not that not bulky. Bulky is not the right word because they're all about the same size, uh, and it's actually the longest one. Um, but these two are just built really, uh, really well. Um, I feel like I could drop it or throw it across the room, and <laughs> I'm not going to try that though. But 48 volt phantom power, same, same type of uh, interface as the other two, except this guy actually has 
um, two separate monitor outs, not to be confused with two or with four distinct outputs. This just gives you the opportunity to A and B between two sets of monitors, which most professional studios or a lot of home studios now will run two sets of studio monitors. So something a little bit bigger or even like a PA style speaker and then your, your uh, regular near field studio monitors. Um, so it allows you to A, B between them. We're gonna go ahead and get each one plugged in utilizing the WA67 Warm Audio 2 mic uh, just so that you can hear the difference, some spoken word and some acoustic guitar playing. All right, guys, so this is the WA67 tube condenser mic from Warm Audio plugged into channel one of the SSL2 Plus without the 4K engaged. The 4K button gives you a little bit uh, high frequency fidelity. I don't know exactly. It's almost like a high shelf is what it sounds like to me. I should have read up a little bit more on it before I did this video, but I'm going to hit that button and you'll be able to hear the difference in the sound of my voice. It just kind of accentuates those high frequencies a little bit but this is spoken word on the ssl all right up next we're just going to play a little bit of guitar just out quarter inch into my pedal board all that i have engaged currently is a new x mesa moon compressor and a new x atlantic reverb um, so both of those are on <laughs> All right, now we're gonna switch interfaces and do that all over again. All right, this is the WA67 plugged into the Roland Rubix 22. We're plugged into channel one. The volume is up a little bit over halfway, so the volume's turned up a little bit more to get about the same gain as the SSL. Um, and that is where we're at. Gonna go ahead and plug the guitar in and do the same thing. At the end of this video, all of these cl clips will be smashed together, one right after the other, so you can get a better idea of what you're listening to. All right, onto the guitar, into the Rubik's. All right, we've got the Warm Audio WA67 tube microphone plugged into the Fluid Audio SRI-2. This is the first time I'm hearing it. I am at the same volume that the SSL was on at about 50%, and it is just as hot. It might actually be a little bit hotter of a signal. Um, I, I feel like this has a lower noise floor than the Roland. The Roland definitely had the highest noise floor, um, but this guy's a little impressive. Um, pretty, uh, pretty sweet. I'm going to plug guitar into it now. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
right, guys. So this is the WA67 tube condenser mic from Warm Audio plugged into channel one of the SSL2+. Plus. This is the WA67 plugged into the Roland Rubix 22. We're plugged into channel one. We've got the Warm Audio WA67 tube microphone plugged into the Fluid Audio SRI-2. All right, to conclude the video, if you've made it this far, um, just want to kind of give you my opinions on the stuff. Um, the only reason that I'd spend the extra money on the SSL is if I am going to utilize the two channels or the two extra outputs. So if I've got a rack of analog gear and I'm going to be taking a vocal, vocal track and putting it through that rack, um, if I'm going to be reamping tube amps, I need to utilize those extra outputs or using it in a live setting um, for uh, just extra sends. Um, that's really the only reason that I would shell out the extra money. I think the Fluid Audio has as good of, if not better, clarity and sound to it. It's a really impressive interface. Um, I thought the Roland sounds good. I, I've utilized it for a long time, so I know you can make it sound good. has has a great color to it, um, but it is the most, uh, it, it kind of had the most color to me. Um, and also had the highest noise floor. I, I didn't do any, I should have recorded just kind of noise floor testing. I just did that real quick um, after I got the stuff plugged in to get the mic at volume and then to listen to where the noise floor was. And there's a little bit, a little bit noticeable uh, on the Roland when it was plugged in. The Fluid SRI2 and the SSL2 Plus were both absolutely silent. So very cool. Um, all three of these would be great options. The Roland is the most uh, the most discreet, so the smallest of them would would probably make the easiest portable rig. But I definitely, definitely, definitely like um, having the plugs on the back of the unit for outputs. The Fluid Audio does have the inputs on the front, but you have access to all the knobs. With front loaded uh, interfaces like this, you're going to have cables sticking out of the front, so it just ha has a little bit different. Uh, kind of thing when you're reaching to it, cables get in your way sometimes, is the only thing that kind of annoyed me using the Roland Rubik's over the years. So out of the three of them, I'm gonna be putting the Fluid Audio in my studio and running it for a while, and I think it's a great piece. So if you guys have any questions, hit me up in the comments. Always happy to chat. We try to use our YouTube channel. I'm going to try to use our YouTube channel more so this year than I have last year. Last year was kind of an odd year with it being a global pandemic. Didn't do enough of this, but I have a lot of fun sharing, uh, sharing music knowledge and information to you. So if you have a video, if you have something in the store at spotsmusic.com that you're interested in, have questions about, or would like to see a video on, feel free to leave it in the comments. Any questions, anything else like that too. Always happy to help. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Peace.